Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is focusing on one of the strongest DPS wall builds currently in game and will at some point get nerfed straight to the ground. The Starfire Protocol and Wither Horde setup has been the pinnacle of max DPS against everything with how strong the two combos are and even if you are under leveled, the build will carry you very far into end game. However, the setup has gotten even more stronger now thanks to the new fragment called Ember of Resolve where getting a solo ability kill will grant you cure. This is very big as solo builds are already strong when it comes down to DPS, so the fact that we can pump out huge damage and get heals in demand makes the entirety of the Starfire setup recommended for all. Which is why I'm going to show you a build that can grant you huge damage boosts, constant heals, non-stop ability energy free to you, and fast super regen, and also a unstoppable resolve. All this and more from today's video. To start, you're going to want to have Touch of Flames so that fusion grenades can explode twice. Then you'll want Heat Rises, where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While Airborne and have Heat Rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. The Warlocks Aspect section don't offer a lot to the user until you hit the Fragment section. Luckily, Touch of Flame is really the main aspect you'll want for the setup, since without it, the Starfire Protocol and everything else will fall apart. So looking into fragments, I've chosen a setup that focuses primarily on enhancing Scorch and DPS on targets, such as Ember of Ashes where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets, Ember of Torches where powered mini attacks against targets make you and allies radiant, Ember of Resolve where solo grenade final blows cure you, and Ember of Searing where defeating Scorch targets grant mini energy and creates fire sprites. The new Ember of Resolve fragment will allow any solo grenades to heal you after each kill, which works perfectly for the setup we have, since it will be used in Empowering Rift for 99% of the time. This fixes a huge issue with Starfire in endgame, which was survivability, as although DPS is huge, staying alive within your rifts for long is impossible unless you rely on certain weapons with healing factors or mods that can offer heals to users. Because of how simple the setup is, this will allow players to lean in more for enhancing their damage further if they wish, or they can build into the healing factor so they can stay alive even more longer. Simply, you're less tied down now than before. For the mods and stats section, this will be very easy to customise to your liking, as I have tested this setup with the bare minimum and the uptime for it is actually really good in the long run. This means that even if you have a low discipline stat, you'll still be able to do good as long as you keep the momentum up for it. For example, our discipline is at tier 9 but this can also be at tier 7 and above if you wished, while recovery is at tier 8 and can stay here as ability energy return will be relatively high. Because of the short cooldown rate that future grenades have, it means that we can invest less in the stats and just add on grenade based mods to fill in the gap, and thus save mod slots for something else. I want to make sure that our grenade regen is good from start to finish, so having grenade kickstart, bomber, and distribution mods are all that I went for and is truthfully all that you should go for as well. The regen timer for each grenade is going to be fast once you activate Starfire Protocol and as long as you're proccing damage while in your rift, this is going to benefit you in the long run. From here, it then leaves you with the armor charge mods to sustain the build for longer. Charged up and stacks on stack is going to give you that extra plus one of armor charge once active and then time dilation mod will increase the duration of armor charges. After that, adding on the Solar Cypher mod and Firepower mod will both help with creating orbs of power as we go along, and then lastly I would recommend you add on the Times 2 Solar Weapon Surge mod so that your solo weapons can get a constant source of buff damage while charges are active. Also, if you have the slot left over, then I would also recommend you add on the Ashes Assets mod since it is cheap, easy to proc, and works well with both supers you decide to use. Now lastly, the weapons being used will be a common setup that many of us are already familiar with. Wither Horde in the first slot will allow us to get our grenades back fast and keep up a sustained pressure onto any bosses we face, as once we land our grenade launch a shot and then use our grenade, we will have gotten our full grenade back and can repeat as many times as you like. This may sound boring to many, but the method and setup behind it does require practice so you can time your shots and not miss out on a bunch of DPS. From here, I would then advise you to pick a solar weapon with incandescent on it. Which one you pick does not matter as you need one that will help you with dealing with ads of all types. I have gone with the Callus Mini Tool as it's a very effective weapon with incandescence and hits hard in all activities. 
It being a 900 RPM means we can armor dump mages to mini bosses with a slightly clean position hit with an effective range. Though anything outside of his range will cause the weapon to fall off, most of the time Corbalans will be in close range while using your rift, so it can play out quite well for you. Of course, Azalo's Bane, BXR-55, and Amit AR2 are good weapons that offer range and the incandescent perk for spreading Scorch damage to targets. So overall, the Ember of Resolve fragment has fixed a core issue with Starfire protocol builds, which is staying alive long enough to deal out huge DPS. Now in the past when Elemental Worlds were still alive, we could use mods such as World of Life to increase our survival odds further, and then add on Seeking Worlds so that it can go towards us once in range. However, the big issue with that still is that it requires users to get within range for worlds to track to you if you have Seeking Worlds on. If you don't even have that, then you need to manually collect them, which on most endgame content is borderline impossible, so you had to play it safe and use cover instead. This makes the build extraordinarily strong in practically a lot of content, as its weakness has been severely reduced. On top of that, although we can't rely on elemental worlds to regen our abilities like old time, we can instead use the new fire sprites that we can create via our abilities. These sprites work the same way as worlds do, and are easy to create. With this and the mods applied to the build, we can easily retain our supers, deal out heavy damage via our abilities or weapons, and also regenerate health while on the go. I mentioned in the last video I wasn't a big fan on these simplified mods to some degree, but when you get the builds like this going, that can provide a huge benefit no matter where you are, and is easily accessible for all players, it makes building a hell of a lot more fun to experience. This is just one example of the many styles you can do for this following build. But what do you ultimately think? So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.